Thank you so much, guys, for showing up today. It's been so amazing seeing through all over, touring with us. But however, now we are back. Charles, you've done a good job. Trust me, we really, really appreciate. So right now, we're going to take you through the first batch of the travel. And it's going to be led by the big man himself, Fadan Wafula. Fadan Wafula, you have just a few minutes to take us through. Thank you. So we train farmers here using the uh, or vi uh, visual uh, on the 10 elements of agroecology. So we have how insects, how birds uh, integrate within our food system. And we say it's good to leave a space for nature to express itself. So when farmers see these pictures, even those who cannot read, then relate and they can be able to understand uh, uh, elements of agroecology yeah, on diversity. Yeah, that's cool, that's beautiful. So keep it up. So part of your composition in your space is teaching a work scene, so you don't mind whether it's interested in agroecology or not, as long as they see the videos, they are attached. The importance of this is that everybody eats and we fuel our bodies with, uh, with food. Yeah. yeah so uh, this is again pictorial. And uh, we borrowed this, uh, the nine universal principles of um, natural farming, and that is actually what we are uh, implementing here, uh, so that you have a whole farm system. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes, talk about this. Yeah, so we have uh, chicken here, part of the elements that we integrate in uh, the farming system here, uh, part of our agroecology, and this is uh, related to our traditional uh, indigenous chicken. And uh, the picture here uh, also showing the traditional Africa, where we've come from and the knowledge that we've gathered for over centuries uh, in, in, in farming and uh, food production. Well, so how do you make use of whatever comes from that chicken? Like how is it helpful? Yeah, so uh, the chicken here um, uh, actually produce the manure and that is a very, very, very small livestock. Huh? Yeah. Even in a very small farm setting. And here in Vihiga, farmers have very small pieces of land, up to a quarter of an acre. So we are demonstrating here how you can design a whole, a whole garden using uh, permaculture principles. Even in a very small, small area, you can still produce food. Wow, that's beautiful. So we having uh, where we're coming from, traditional Africa, and this is now uh, the modern reality, modern reality, but still how you can uh, be able to integrate uh, yeah. uh, different elements in the farm. Sure. How is this? Why are we doing this kind of setup? You yes, that? so this is a swell, a big swell, and yeah. uh, we have uh, water harvesting uh, techniques here. Underground here we have pipes yeah. that uh, help us to collect rainwater so that we can uh, have water in the ponds there. We say there can be no agriculture without seed. So, and uh, in our communities, women are the custodians uh, yeah. of our seeds. Yeah, yeah women are the custodians so of our seeds. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we believe in uh, gender yeah. and uh, inclusion, in inclusivity. Awesome. Uh, that is important. Uh, uh, when talking about food yeah. uh, situations. Wow, well, hello, how are you? Well done. Yes. So this is our seed unit, seed saving unit. Yeah. And very important, we talk about um, keeping the seed alive. So if you keep your money in the bank and it doesn't generate any interest, any profit, it's of no use. So uh, we exchange these seeds with farmers and uh, that's how we keep the seed alive. And wow. uh, seed is so important, so important to any farmer and to everybody. Mm. Yeah, producers and consumers that we have to uh, have indigenous seeds. We have to allow uh, farmers to have farmer managed seed systems. Mm. Yeah, uh, uh, running in order for us to be able to uh, uh, have um, sustainable food. How systems. many varieties do you have here? Yeah, For instance, we have about 30 varieties of uh, bean seeds. We have 50 varieties of uh, local vegetables. We have uh, about 13 varieties of different maize, maize different types. We have um, the red type. We have the black type. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is my my favorite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it. Uh, this is my favorite. 
uh, it produces uh, purple, yeah. purple flour. Yeah. Oh wow! Why, why do you have varieties? Are they having different uh, nutrients? Do they keep varying in one way or another? Varieties. Or you the, would keep one. Variety is the spice of life. So through a variety, we have diversity, and those different colors represent uh, different nutrients. And these are nutrient dense foods. They are important for us, and they're important for the diversity and uh, gastronomy. Uh, for people all over the planet. Well, are these seeds indigenous or you've imported them? From so somewhere? these are what we call farmer managed seed systems. Yeah, so they are open seeds. They're not hybrids. Ooh. We've allowed bees, we've allowed moths, yeah, to transfer the pollen there. Just as nature is supposed to function. Wow, yes. <laughs> that's, that's so beautiful. Well, well done, Bioji. You're doing a good job here. Thank you. And uh, we believe your farmers are not lacking. Your communities are not lacking. They are probably never falling hungry at any point. Okay, so where are we going? So we are having a fermentation process taking place here because those seeds cannot grow without uh, proper uh, fertilization, with natural fertilization. Yeah. So this is at the heart of the healthy soil, healthy food um, trainings where we have uh, production of biofertilizers and here we have different types of biofertilizers here we have the uh, liquid uh, fermented uh, fertilizers uh, here we have the solid native uh, microbes and um, we are actually capturing what we are doing here is that we are actually using the beneficial microorganisms uh, to invigorate life in the soil uh, because the soil is living yeah. with these living organisms. Mm. So uh, we use this to make different recipes. Okay. And part of this are also used for uh, animal feeds. So like the solid native microbes are actually uh, made from wheat, uh, from duff from the forest or from the food forest, and then with molasses. Uh, molasses uh, is food for these microorganisms. And then we actually use as probiotic uh, for our animals and also to inoculate our soil, our bokashi, yeah, so that we have more soil uh, biology uh, functioning. And then it is the soil biology that is responsible for nutrient accumulation. And then plants can be able to uh, have healthy, healthy, uh, healthy, healthy, healthy growth. Mm. Yes. So how much time do you invest in having all these uh, biofertilizers? Well, this is um, our life as bio gardening. Bio is for life. Mm. So we are gardening for life. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so if someone is just venturing into these things, how long do you think it can take them to reach you? Yeah, it needs patience. It needs uh, some training. Mm. And uh, it's, it's, taken us, it's taken us more than um, uh, five years, seven years to be able to do this. But we keep on learning. Every day there's something new to learn. We cannot say that we've learned and we, are, we do not have room for... Um, other, 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 other learnings from elsewhere. Wow, that's beautiful. Okay, let's proceed. So we have a small livestock here, and uh, these are actually our manure factories. Sir. Mm. And as I said, some of these microorganisms, I mean, we do the culturing so that uh, we can uh, use as uh, probiotics for our animals, but they also undergo a process so that uh, even humans can be able to uh, to use. Yeah, so, and uh, these are sanded goats. We do milk them, but mm. they also give us their urine, their manure, uh, we use in our um, soil improvement uh, processes in the garden. Wow, oh, that's beautiful. Let's see how you collect the manure, the urine. Yeah, so we are collecting the manure just through the design process here, so that we have this gutter uh, it collects the droppings and also the urine and then we we take this every morning this is usually uh, collected and uh, so this is received by the staff every morning uh, so that we have two products here so we have the urine and uh, we have the the dropping so the goat droppings can go three pathways. One pathway we can make the inoculated the compost. Mm. We can also uh, have the urine in our compost here. When we are doing uh, 
the composting and recycling process yeah. and we can also use the droppings the dried ones uh, to make bokashi well, we'll also so see bokashi beautiful you've done a good job for us uh, Fadna. we believe we have quite much more that we're gonna show you so at this moment i'd love to take you back to charles as we look out for more for you thank you so much